Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the third lecture on uh, design and analysis of experiments. Today we will discuss the types of experimental design. Contents of today's presentation are objective of experimental design, one factor complete randomized design, one factor randomized complete block design, two factor complete randomized design, two factor randomized complete block design general factorial design to the power k factorial design to the power k minus p fractional factorial design central composite design and other special design. So, we will discuss very brief what are those different types of designs and we will take around 1 hour into halves of 30 minutes each to complete this uh, introductory part on types of designs. In fact, the um, subsequent lectures will be detailing all those designs and their and their analysis uh, one after another. So, objectives of experimental design, if you recall my first two lecture, I, I explained you the process model. This process model it is a very important one and you please understand that whenever we talk about experiment, we talk about experiment of a process on a process and which is controlled by several controllable factors which is affected by uncont uncontrollable factors and the effects are realized on the output response variable. From that point in view, then we have also discussed that process characterization, then process control, then your process uh, optimization and robust design. These are the objectives what we want to achieve through design of experiments and analysis of experimental data. We can see the objectives in some other ways like there may be comparative objectives. By comparative objective we mean that there are several factors which are governing the output variable. So, which are the factors are having more effect, which are having less effect that sense you can do some comparison. The screening objectives, there may be some factors which ultimately insignificantly contributing towards the output, output or the behavior of the response variable, those will be screened out for, for subsequent analysis and decision making and that is why this is known as screening objective. Then response surface objective, the response surface is pertaining to the output variable or the response variable y. So, what it is objective we want to see the how the that behavior of y uh, will change uh, when we go from the fact uh, one level factors one level of a factor to another level or when we change uh, several factors at a time from one level to another level. So, this can be seen through response surface which, which is basically a function of x. Now, <coughs> this response surface case it may we may be interested to know where the optimum optimum response lies it what does it mean? It means that what are the settings for the control variables 
so that we can achieve the optimum desirable value of y and then the process operator will set the experiment uh, set the process or tune the parameters of the process during uh, in that uh, range so that y optimal optimal optimum y will be achieved another one is mixture objective in mixture objective what happen that there are certain situation where we require to mixing uh, to mix several materials together in certain proportion and the total will be 100 percent. So, this require a different kind of design and that is known as mixture design and the objective is to find out the perfect blend the or the proportion of different ingredient that will be mixed. So, in order to achieve that uh, the design uh, design is called mixture design and the objective is to get the perfect mixture. So, now, <coughs> now consider <coughs> let us consider the factors. So, as, as you see from this model there can be several factors some are controllable some are uncontrollable and also the controllable factors can be 1, can be 2, can be many more. Now, we, when, when we will consider henceforth primarily the controllable factors and we will try to find out how the, the design will experimental design will change if we, if we, if we seek uh, take one factor at a time, two factors at a time and also include some of the uncontrolled or noise variables in the uh, experiment how, how the factor uh, experimental design will change. We will see first one example. So, let me read out the example. An engineer is studying methods for improving the ability to detect targets on a radar scope. What is the what is the objective? Improving the ability to detect targets on a radar scope. So, that means this radar scope suppose is a product produced certain through certain process and the radar scope will be such that it will it will it will be able to detect the operators while using the radar scope will detect uh, the target quite easily. So, there are multiple factors controllable and uncontrollable factors which will govern the production process and as well as uh, it should be considered that when the radar scope will be used what are the factors. Uh, that will govern. Now, the engineer finds that two important factors while designing the product that is a radar scope is amount of background noise which is known as ground clutter and second one is the type of filter placed over the screen. So, these two important factors they are controllable factors because the uh, it, it assumed that the ground clutter, clutter can be controlled as well as type of field you have the opportunity to choose different kinds of filters. So, that is controllable. So, it is experienced that the ground clutter can be categorized into three levels like low clutter, medium clutter and high clutter situation and two filter types are available in the market. The experiment can be performed by randomly selecting a treatment combination that means ground clutter level and filter time, filter type and then introducing a signal representing the target into the scope. The intensity of this target is increased until the operator observes it. The intensity level at detection is then measured as the response variable y. So, so, the ability to detect targets this is measured through intensity level what level what is the way the intensity at which the operators is able to see the target. So, this intensity level can be measured and which is the response variable because the operator because of operators availability 
इट इज कन्वीनियंट टू सिलेक्ट एन ऑपरेटर एंड कीप हिम और हार एट द स्कोप अंटिल ऑल द नेसेसरी रन्स हैव बीन मेड फर्दर मोर ऑपरेटर्स डिफर इन देयर स्किल एंड एबिलिटी टू यूज द स्कोप ओके सो यू कैन कन्वर्ट दिस इन टू द पिक्टोरियल रिप्रेजेंटेशन लाइक द प्रोसेस मॉडल but many a times what happen we will be having the analogy with the product design sometimes it is not possible because when we we may be interested to to link with some kind of service some kind of other kind of observation also but the process model in general can be fitted to uh, any example and with this example also so how we are fitting this process model here we are saying that what are the controllable factors controllable factors are ground clutter and type of filter ground clutter we are denoting by factor a types of uh, level by factor b and there is another factor which is operator now depending on the situation operator can be a controllable factors or can be a noise also but most of the time it will be a uncontrollable one because the process the plant or the process where the operations will be taken place the operators will come from that locality unless it is a very very specialized process so under the situation you have to rely on the local available people so it it it, it will be a uncontrollable one so another important one is the process uh, output which is response variable in this case the intensity level at which the detection is possible so given this information let us see uh, some of the designs first think for one factor complete randomized design here the engineer assumed that the factor ground clutter could be the most important one and hence decides to conduct experiments with a only please remember this is not the correct one because first of all only two factors was we have considered and secondly uh, only one uh, noise or uncontrollable factor operators were also considered and we we have simplified this here further with one factor only it is just it is to show that it is to let you learn that if you consider one factor when how you will do one factor complete randomized design so <coughs> it may be a situation that one factor is important and you want to do one factor experiment so in this factor case import another important consideration is the label here we are saying label low label medium label high label please keep in mind few things in the process model controllable factors so factor is very important in this case we are considering factor a second is it is not that all the values of the factors you will consider and accordingly you will do experiment it is it is not possible many a times factor can be categorical in nature but even if continuous factor case you cannot consider all the lab, all the values for a in this case ground clutter given three labels so another important when you say factor another important one is label here we have three level 1 2 3 so one is low two is medium three is high okay then what you are doing here you want to you want to see that whether the y y is basically the intensity level at detection what is y intensity level at detection so whether this y value changes if you if you do an experiment keeping ground clutter at low keeping ground clutter at medium keeping clutter at high level or other way i can say factor with level 1 level 2 and level 3 
So then you you have to conduct an experiment. There are three settings. Please keep in mind: low, medium, and high. So these three levels, one factor. So three independent or distinct distinct experimental settings: low, medium, and high. Suppose you 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 thought that you will conduct experiment. keeping a at low a at medium and a at high and the number of experiment in each of the settings these are experimental settings settings which is also known as treatments treatments the process is treated at this level at this level or at this level these are known treatments so factor a when it is low this is one kind of treatment to the process when factor a is at medium level another kind of treatment at high level another kind of treatment so i can say that 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 experimental setting or experimental treatments the material which is going through the process being treated all all those different levels so maybe at each settings or treatment suppose you want to do the experiment several times if if in a certain or treatment level if you if you repeat the experiment several times basically you are interested to know more number of get more number of observations and which is known as replications so in this case in general replication can be n so in this case suppose eight number of experimental run in each applications so what is happening here you have 8 into 3 total 24 experimental runs so it is complete because you have consider all the all the all the labels and what is randomization here so you require 24 experiments to be conducted keeping uh, or at, at settings low medium and high for ground clutter or at the treatment low medium and high and eight on each of the treatment levels now what you require to do you cannot do the experiment suppose low keeping a factor at low and do five experiments get the data then medium repeat then high repeat this is not randomization what you require as 24 experimental runs are required what you do you 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 randomly choose the order of experimentation so using rand function in com excel you uh, you can do this kind of randomization for example uh using rand function we found that the first experiment is this one so the second experiment will be second experiment will be here so what does it mean first experimental run you are you are conducting first experimental run keeping ground clutter at low level and observing the response y which is 96 intensity level second experiment will be done at media uh, medium level only and this is the case third one third one where third one may be here okay fourth one fourth one here so like this this order of experimentation is random and using random number what happen you generate a different these things here actually uh, mm, the 24 observ observations what what way we have we have done this uh, this one we have we have thought that there will be 24 experiments and we give this 1 2 3 4 like the, uh, this first and then using rand function we found out the which one will be which cell there are 24 cell there are 24 this data we put as per this there are 24 cells this cells first this cell second this cell third this cell fourth like this so you have to do randomization okay so once you do randomization and you take all the uh, the fact all factors all level then this is complete 
and we we assume that this kind of data we will get. Now, once you get this kind of data, then what happened? What is your aim here, objective here? You want to know that if you keep ground clutter at low level, medium level, high level, whether, whether there is change in change in mean value of the response y. A box plot is one of the important um, box plot is one of the important important plot which gives you some fair idea that whether there is difference in mean values of the uh, responses or not. If you see there were somewhere mean value will be here, somewhere mean value will be here, somewhere mean value will be here. So, there is a increasing trend. So, we and, and the difference may be significant. So, at first hand we understand that yes, if you change the uh, factor from low to medium to high, there is a possible change in response variable whether that change is significant or not that will be understood through analysis only. So, now <clears throat> what is happening? Okay. Now, we will discuss <coughs> about one factor with random complete block design. We are bringing one concept called block. If you, you have seen in first lecture, I think in the second lecture that blocking is an important concept, blocking. So, I said blocking is an important concept, blocking. So, in this example, so there are four operators and as the operators differ in their skill and ability to use the scope, it is logical to use the operators as blocks because if I choose operator 1, operator 2, operator 3 and operator 4 and they vary in their expertise, their knowledge, their back, uh, educational background if they vary. Then what will happen when operator 1 will see the scope, radar scope and the intensity level required to see the target, it, it, there may be variability, there will be variability induced in this process. So, in that case operators are contributing or contributing in the results. So, you can block this nuisance. So, if you do this, this this is known as blocking. So, in order to blocking what you require to do at least that all the labels for the factors this label all the label this will must be experiment must be conducted by each of the blocks. So, operator 1 definitely will conduct experiment for all the 3 labels, operator 2 also, operator 3 also, operator 4 also. So, that means, you have sufficient uh, material or the time and other things available. So, that all the uh, all the blocks here in this case operators can be effectively used. Fortunately enough what happened we have for at each level against each against each operator two level of ex two, 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 uh, two uh, times experiments that is the sample size here for each combination is 2. So, that means, we are doing replication also. So, this is known as uh, complete random complement complete block design ok RCBD. So, the experiment will be conducted based on that random certain random order and in random sequence it is that randomization using the random number table or using some program 
and that mean here again the 24 uh, 24 cells are there you require to do 24 experiment you randomize it. So, your randomization should not be in any sequence like this the order of experiment should not be like this that you will first do low then medium level that high level here maybe you take first operator 1 then operator 2 operator 3 that should not be it should be completely randomized. So, if you maintain this randomization and you are in a position to to block the operator in this case the operators or the nuisance factors then you can add this nuisance factor into the uh, design uh, and then this design will be known as randomized block design and again it is complete because all the all the all the settings that low medium high and also all the all the operators together we have done it. Then, then I will go where is this one factor C B D, then we will we'll see that two factors. So, first I uh, so what I have explained, I explained one factor complete randomized design, then I explained one factor with blocking. Now we are saying that another design two factors complete randomized design. So, you have seen in this example that ground clutter and type of filter two controllable factors. So, if you consider if you consider this clutter type and filter type that is the factor A and this is factor B, then as clutter type has C three labels and filter has two levels. So, how many treatments combination you are getting six? Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You see you are getting low, medium, high 1, 2, 3 into 2 to 6. And how many observation under this case 1, 2, 3, 4. You just see that low and type filter 1 in. So, replication 4. Here also 4. So, like this 4 replication. 6 different treatment combinations or 6 different training uh, settings and each settings with random with when the base basis of complete randomization you have done it ok. So, first one is one factor complete randomized design, second one is one factor randomization with blocking, third one is two factor complete randomized design we are not considering blocking here. Now, if you see the response versus clutter types that is factor A and response versus uh, that is filter type that is filter type then this is B ok. So, you see that clutter level 1 to level 2 to level 3. So, there is there is increase in response. And similarly, filter type also if you go from 1, so filter type this this is a this is a wrong plot. So, filter type 1 to 2 this portion is not required this much. So, again it is increasing, but anyhow what we require to do because then you may be interested to know what is this value and what is this value because there are several values, several observations are there. So, what we are saying that when your field uh, clutter type level low then we found out the average of the all the y responses ok, I am sorry it is correct, correct. I have just missed this one. What we are doing here? Here it, this is cluttered type. Yes, it is A. This is A. So filter type one, filter type two. 
So, if I if you keep filter type 1 means this one and you change your clutter type from 1 level 1 to level 2 to level 3, how the changes in responses are taking place it is given here. So, filter type 1 low level what is the average value this then second average value this third average value this. So, the average response average response for low medium high of factor A when factor B is at 1 that is type filter type 1 then this is the behavior and same for filter type 2. Okay. So, this is known as two factor complete randomized design. Okay. So, now please uh, let me repeat again you must first know number of factors. Second you must know level of each factors then you will know the settings or the treatments then in each treatment or setting setting or treatment you will conduct several experiment several experimental runs this is known as replication and obviously your experiment will not be in a particular order it should be random order so randomization with respect to that the order of the that the factors that low medium high the combinations and also no uh, also um, with it is not that if your replication you want to replicate four times so, you choose randomly a particular setting or treatment and then experiment four times they are in sequence that is also not permitted that also be random. So, that means, you, you will choose one cell at a time and that selection will come through the randomization. Okay. So, in the in, in two factor case your number of factor two here labels three and two labels well in general factor A label can be A labels, factor B label can be B labels. In this particular example A equal to 3 and B equal to 2. Okay. Then Now, you can do two factor factorial design with and with uh, blocking also in the in the example if we keep uh, operator as block and two different factors a and b a 3 label a 3 label and b b filter type two labels two labels each and we have first block operator, second block for operator 2, third block for operator 3, fourth block for operator 4. So, then what are you doing here? In each block that all the 6 treatment combinations are treatment combinations 6 because here 3, here 2 A equal to 3, B equal to 2 number of treatments will be number of treatments will be a b that is 6 i we also sometimes say the independent distinct experimental setting distinct distinct experimental settings so block operator 2 operator 3 operator 4 Okay, so, then I, I, I hope that you are now understood what is randomized block, randomized design, complete randomized design and 
random complete randomized design randomization with blocking so blocking for some noise variables or some variable whose inclusion uh, inclusion ultimately affect the response but you don't want to estimate what is its effect rather you want uh, to estimate the effect of the factors controllable factors like a and b in presence of the block in presence of the noise and variable okay then come to the general factorial design that means suppose you think of that you have you have k number of factors k number of factors if k equal to 3 then we can say ground clutter a one factor filter type b another factor may be operator C another factor these are all controllable factors we are considered. So, here we assume that operator can also be controlled. So, in this case you will have a you will have a general factorial design. So, I say k number of factors are there. So, in this case Suppose you have k number of factors, k factors. So, I can say a, b, c, d like this up to k. So, then each factor here in case of ground clutter low, medium, high. So, similarly, there may be different A labels. So, for B it may be at B labels, C it may be C labels, D it may be with D labels like up to K that may be your some M label, K label. Okay. So, all those factors if you consider and then do the complete randomized design and then you generate and this is this will be known as general factorial design general factorial design ok. So, in general in factorial design there are in few interesting fact things are there. Suppose, uh, you, you have seen yes, already seen that in the example that clutter versus uh, your response y when your clutter ground clutter low level medium level and high level and then how this change change is taking place. Suppose, this is filter type 1. Now, it may so happen and also you have seen for filter type 2 maybe something like this, but I, I have to check. So, in that case what actually what is happening that what effect you are you may be interested to know the effect of A. Similarly, you may be interested to know the effect of B. Similarly, you will be effect to know the effect of C, effect of D like this. When you are interested to know effect of A, B, C all these are all those things they are known as main effects, but it may be a you may be interested to know if both the factors present how they they change they ultimately influence the y. 
So, that means their interaction effects you may be interested to know. Interaction effects. So, in factorial design, main effects and interaction effects are very, very important. If there are k number of factors, so you will be having k main effects. And how many interaction effects will be there? There will be many interaction effects because there will be two OA interaction when A in between A and B or B and C or A and D like this. So, two OA that will be N if there are how many factors? K number of factors uh, are there K C 2. Similarly, 3 way interaction K C 3, 4 way interaction K C 4, finally, K th way interaction K C K. So, many inter interactions will be there. So, th these are all important things to know. In factorial design, we want, we want to know what are the effect of each of the factors and whether they are significant or not. What are the interaction effects? Maybe two way interaction, three way interaction, four way interaction, depending on the number of factors present. But it is interesting to note that the main effects and the lower order interaction effects are usually significant, and higher order or more higher order interaction effects are usually become insignificant. This is known as the, the sparsity of the effects principle. So, we will discuss uh, this when we will detail the general fact, uh, factorial design. So, thank you very much uh, in next class some of the uh, other design aspects will be discussed and today in this lecture today in, in this lecture. So, we have discussed that there will be complete randomized design with one factor, complete randomized design with two factor, complete randomized design with more than two factors, multiple factors which is general factorial design. There is another important concept called blocking. So, what you require to do? You require to block the nuisance variables during design, then it with one factor it will be one factor blocking with blocking two factors with blocking or multiple factor factors with blocking. Thank you.